Putin bad news. Russia's policymakers are at odds as the falling ruble compounds the costs of a protracted war. The ruble, which has been on a downward trend since December, should have been bolstered when Russia's central bank surprised economists on July 21 by hiking interest rates by a full percentage point, double the expected increase. Three weeks later, on August 14, the ruble had fallen to a new low against the dollar, breaking below the key psychological level of 100, prompting a massive emergency rate hike of 3.5 percentage points, bringing the total rate to 12 percent. As the price of oil, Russia's primary export and source of foreign currency earnings, rises, the ruble falls. While historically a rise in oil prices has coincided with a rise in the ruble, the current situation is different because Russia's invasion of Ukraine has distorted Russia's own economy and laid currency mines. The ruble's credibility is in jeopardy. Former Russian central bank chief and outspoken Kremlin critic Sergei Alexashenko said on Twitter after the rate hike on August 15. He assumed that the currency would react minimally to interest rate hikes. In the background of the ruble's steady decline over the past few months is the stalemated conflict in Ukraine, where Russian forces have made few gains since the initial months following the full-scale invasion in February 2022 and are now facing a Ukrainian counteroffensive in both the east and the south. A large budget deficit is putting pressure on the ruble exchange rate as a result of Russia's escalating military spending in response to the fierce resistance it is facing from the Ukrainian people. Western sanctions are also cutting into Russia's revenue from energy exports. As a result, the availability of dollars and euros has decreased, as demand from Russian businesses and consumers has increased for imported machinery, technology, and other goods. Economists warn that President Putin will be forced to take tough measures to counter the weak ruble. If he is serious about bringing inflation under control and stabilizing the ruble, he will have to cut spending. Putin has made it clear he plans to keep the invasion going indefinitely, and Russia will hold a presidential election in March. If Putin decides to run, he will almost certainly win, as the Kremlin has a stranglehold on the country's political and media systems. But after the brief but embarrassing mutiny by the Wagner mercenary group in June and continued setbacks in the war, he needs to shore up his image. Therefore, the burden of protecting the ruble will shift to the central bank, as he is unlikely to reduce military or social spending significantly. Economist Liam Peach of London-based research firm Capital Economics wrote on August 15 that, there is a tug of war going on in Russia right now between President Putin's military ambitions on the one hand and the policy objectives of the central bank and finance ministry on the other. That fight was on full display just before the big rate hike, one of many indications of strain within the ruling elite over the war's effects on the economy and society. Putin's economic advisor, Maxim Orishkin, laid into the central bank without naming the bank or its chief, Alvira Nabialina, in a column published by the state news agency TASS on August 14. He wrote, the source of the weakening of the ruble and the acceleration of inflation is soft monetary policy. Nabialina who is well-respected internationally and has been credited with limiting the damage to Russia's economy in a little over a decade as central bank chief, has blamed a drop in exports for the ruble's depreciation and has suggested that war-related increases in state spending and labor shortages have contributed to inflation. Many specialists agree with her position. Nabialina faces a challenging task regardless. Policymakers' ability to prop up the ruble has been hampered, according to Peach, because the West has frozen an estimated $300 billion in Russian central bank foreign currency reserves, shunned investment in the country, and capped the price at which it can export oil. Before Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine and the subsequent sanctions, the central bank could bolster the ruble by selling billions of dollars in foreign currency reserves, or Western investors could buy rubles because they believed the currency was undervalued.